What is the best way to add realistic 3D camera movement to your shots? Let's go. Now for this project, you're going to need your own video clips. Ideally, you want clips that have already been filmed on a tripod or a stabilized gimbal. As I'm someone who doesn't have the time to travel the world and build my stock database, I've personally been using ArtGrid for all my video content. Now the thing I love most and the main reason I personally signed up to the ArtGrid service was because of the high quality media you get. Now when I'm saying quality, I'm not just talking about the overall resolution, it's the high standard they've set for the type of video content they provide. The biggest issue I've always had with stock video is the fact that the clips always look exactly like stock footage. The thing I love here though is that each of these clips clips look like they could be straight out of a TV commercial. Now for this particular project, I can single out a few clips that have either been filmed on a tripod or a gimbal. So I'm looking for very smooth dolly movements in. I don't want a clip that has handheld movement. I'm also looking for drone shots that are very smooth, sort of flying forward. Something that would look quite good with a little bit of camera movement added to it. Anything where the camera is moving towards something or close to the ground or something like that will also look really good. Another thing I like is when I click on the clips, it shows me the related clips and the angles that are in that same bundle. For this project, I'm going to be singling out a few clips to use here. Then I can add them straight to my cart and immediately start downloading them. The best part is that the whole site is covered by this one blanket commercial license. So it doesn't matter what my project is or how I'm going to use it, I know I'm completely covered with their system. Now the cost is $299 per year and for that you can download an unlimited amount of clips all covered with this one commercial blanket license. Now it might sound like a lot, but I've personally used other sites to download clips in the past and I've paid as much as 30 to even $60 just for one clip that can be only used in one project and with one license. Now think about that for a second in just one project I'm working on, I've already spent the equivalent of a yearly ArtGrid subscription. But the other thing to keep in mind is I can't use any of those clips on any other projects outside of those license terms. So with ArtGrid to pay only $299 for an unlimited amount of downloads and one license to cover me on every project, and once you download a clip with an active subscription, it's yours forever, even if you don't resubscribe. That to me just seems kind of amazing how they're managing to do this. On the other side, they also have Artlist, which is exactly the same, but specifically designed around getting music for your project. I've personally used Artlist for a year, and again, I love the one license thing they have going on, which just simplifies the whole process which is a real win as far as I'm concerned. As a special offer for this video, I've partnered with Artlist, and when you use my affiliate link down below for either ArtGrid or Artlist, you also get an additional two months added to your subscription. The reason I've put this tutorial together is because I've had a lot of questions about what the best way to create realistic camera movement is inside of After Effects. This is the way that I've done it in the past and I found this to be the most realistic looking effect. The best way to get realistic 3D camera movement is to film with your camera and then translate that into the clips that you want to use it for. Now in this case, what I've got here is just a simple point and shoot camera. Now you don't even need this, you could simply use a phone or anything that can just take a basic video. The other things you'll need is some masking tape, a marker pen, and a blank wall or something that you can stick the masking tape onto to create some tracking markers. Now here I've just created a series of crosses and I've positioned about four of them roughly on this screen. Then I've grabbed my permanent marker and just simply drawn out some crosses on that masking tape to create some additional tracking points. Then I'm going to take my camera and stand in front of those tracking markers and line up my screen so that all the tracking markers can be seen in the shot. 
Now I can simply record my video and just move my camera in different ways. Now keep in mind that your camera doesn't have to just move in this way. You can move the camera back and forth. So if you know the clip that you're going to be using has a specific point in the background, you could even zoom your camera in if you wanted that real handheld zoom look. Now if you don't have access to a camera or you can't be bothered filming your own clips, I've included a link in the description below to all of these clips here which you can use to follow along with the tutorial and also apply directly to your videos. So with these clips, I'm just gonna bring them straight into After Effects here. Then with my first clip here, I'm just gonna right click and create a new comp from selection. So if I just play through, you can already see that we have this camera movement. And what we want to do is translate that into a 3D camera and then use that 3D camera to apply it to our clips. Now this is a very similar process to what they do in Hollywood films where they're using a real camera to get coverage in a virtual set. So all of those realistic 3D camera movements of someone physically holding a camera gets translated across into the final film. So what we're doing is we're going to take this clip, I'm going to come up to animation and track camera. That's going to analyze the 3D camera in the background and we can use that information to create a 3D camera. So now that that's finished, what I want to do is just select somewhere in the middle, right click and create a new null and camera. Then what we can do is just delete that null and delete that layer underneath. And what we're left with is the 3D camera with the camera movement already in there. I can just drag a clip into my timeline here. And then what I can do is just simply make this a 3D layer and that's automatically gonna apply that 3D camera information to that layer. Now when I play through, you can see it's applied that camera information to that layer behind. Now where it disappears here, what I can do is just bring this down and reposition it just to make sure that it fills that entire frame. So if I was just playing before and after, you can see that that movement's been translated across. Now it looks good as it is, but say I just wanna have some more fine tuned control over that handheld camera movement. So I'm happy with the overall movement. Maybe the speed is just a little bit too much. So the great thing here is all I need to do is right click on that layer, come up to time and enable time stretch. Now what I can do is if I add a stretch factor of say 500, what that does, it essentially then slows down that camera movement, making it a lot smoother. The other great thing about this technique is it also works with camera zooms and movements all within a 3D space. So if you move the camera back and forth, it will translate that over the top of your clip. So you can start to do some interesting things here. So like this clip, for instance, I'm walking towards the screen in a handheld camera movement. Now what I want to do, I'm gonna take this clip, create a new comp, and I'm also going to track the camera for this particular clip. So now with that clip, I'm just going to right click, create a new null and camera and repeat that process. I'm gonna delete that clip and delete that null. And I want to apply that movement to a drone shot. So I'm gonna grab my clip here, just drag it straight in. And if I just play through the clip as it is, you can see we've got that really nice low movement, but it's really stabilized at the moment. And I wanna get a bit of that camera movement into it as well as a bit of that zoom. So what I'm going to do is make that 3D. It'll automatically apply that movement to that clip. Now I just need to scale this up a bit here to fill this frame. And again, you start to see some interesting effects we're working with here. So again, I want to slow this down. I find it a little bit too much. So I'm just gonna come up here to the time stretch, maybe slow this down by a factor of 200. And you can see we're starting to make it look a lot more fluid. So this will help give you, if you wanted to get those really fluid movements with the camera and your drone, something that looks really unique. Another cool idea you could use this for is if you wanted to replicate a first person view drone flying where you have the camera rotating over the screen. Now you could do that digitally, but this will just give you that authentic looking camera movement because it's also added a little bit of that camera movement in as well. 
This is a great technique that can not only be used creatively, but really make your shots look a lot more interesting. So there you go, I hope you got something out of this video. If you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. If you like this video and you wanna see more content just like this, you can also check out this playlist here on the side of screen to check out more videos exactly like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.